Now what I want you guys to notice about these compound prepositions is that the end word all come from the list that I wrote on the board. Like of, to, from, I think with, yeah, with. Okay, so if you see one of those endings and you see some of these words in front of it, you know that you probably have a compound preposition. Okay, does that make sense? Picking up what I'm putting down? Smell what I'm stepping in? Nah. All right, moving on. So let's practice. I want you just to circle the preposition in this sentence or preposition. Hey, guess what? The preposition in the sentence is on the board behind my head. Okay? The preposition here is of. Of. Okay? Some of you circled form. Form is actually a noun in this sentence. Okay? It's functioning as the direct object, which we haven't reviewed yet. You probably learned in middle school. But of is our only preposition in this sentence. Try this one. Remembers what the is called. 
thing. Yeah, it's an article. Okay, and how do articles function? What part of speech are they? Malachi? They're adjectives. Okay, so this the is just modifying store. So from the preposition all the way to the object of the preposition is the prepositional phrase. So these three words make up the prepositional phrase. Just remember, prepositions, they always have to be followed by an object of the preposition. The object of the preposition will always be a noun or sometimes a pronoun. Okay? So everything from the preposition to the object is part of the prepositional phrase. Remember that. Let's practice and see if we get this. So go ahead and underline all of the prepositional phrases in the sentence. You identified that there are two prepositional phrases in this sentence, okay? All the way is the first one, right? All is a preposition. Way is our object of the preposition. That's actually a noun. I know it's like a weird one, right? It doesn't necessarily look like a noun. And then the is modifying way. So all the way is our first prepositional phrase. Starts with the preposition, ends with an object of the preposition. The second one is to the store, okay? To is one of our key six prepositions, right? So we know that's our preposition. Store is our object of the preposition. It's our noun. The is modifying store. So from this preposition, the object of the preposition is the entire prepositional phrase. Nice job. You guys nailed that. Try this one. what you're Ooh. all right oh no ah, I gave it away I was gonna say make sure what you're underlining is starts with a preposition <clears throat> okay finish in five okay well you guys pretty much crushed it I already kind of showed you Okay, so we have two prepositional phrases in this sentence, right? The first one is from the mountain. It starts with one of our key six prepositions from. It ends with the object of the preposition, mountains. The is modifying mountains, so from the preposition to the object, that whole thing is a prepositional phrase. We have another one following that prepositional phrase. So two prepositional phrases in a row. To the valleys. To is one of our key six prepositions. Valleys is our object of the preposition. The is modifying valleys, so from the preposition to the object, that is the prepositional phrase. That's it. So nicely done. I heard, I saw some people down here underlining like, heard the joyful news or the joyful news, but remember, the prepositional phrase has to start with a preposition. Okay? The is not a preposition. It's an article. Okay? It's an adjective. And heard is a verb. Right? It's like an action. So you always have to start the prepositional phrase with a preposition. So just make sure it starts with a preposition, ends with an object of the preposition. Okay, one more practice for prepositional phrases. Let's try to finish in five. 
How many prepositional phrases are in this sentence? Four. There are four. This is like a sentence of prepositional phrases. It's crazy. So one trick that I'm going to tell you guys, we'll talk about it later on in the year when we actually learn how to diagram prepositional phrases and all that. But one trick with prepositional phrases, the subject and the verb of the sentence will never, ever, 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 ever be inside of a prepositional phrase. So if you can get rid of the subject and the verb of the sentence, then you're kind of narrowing down where your phrases can be. So who or what is this sentence about? Auburn? We. We is the subject, so we know that we cannot be part of any prepositional phrase. What's the verb? What are we doing? Lauren? Sang is the verb. Okay, so again, these two cannot be part of a prepositional phrase, but guess what? All the other words in the sentence are part of a prepositional phrase. What? Crazy. All right, so check it out. The first one, in the car, okay? In is a preposition. We can be in a box, okay? That's how we remember that one. Remember the box. You can be in a box. It's followed by an object of the preposition car, thus modifying car. Starts with the preposition, ends with the object, that's a prepositional phrase. About is another preposition, okay? That's one you just kind of have to know. Um, I know you can't do the boxing with it, and it's not on my list, but about is a preposition. It was on the main list I showed you earlier. Life and love are the objects of that preposition. So we actually have two objects in that prepositional phrase. That can happen. Okay? That's called a compound object, and you can always have more than one object. You can have as many objects in the prepositional phrase as you want. Okay? So... Life and love are our objects of the preposition. So it starts with the preposition, ends with the last object. So this is our second prepositional phrase. And then most of you got the final two. Okay, on is a preposition. You can be on a box. Way is the object of the preposition. Our is possessive. So it's describing which way. So on our way is the prepositional phrase. And then two, one of our key six prepositions. Mall is the object of the preposition. Thus describing mall. So to the mall is our final prepositional phrase. Whoop, whoop. Most of you did awesome. And you were all able to get at least two, it looks like. So, well done. Questions on prepositional phrases? All right, we're moving on to conjunctions then. So a conjunction, all it does is it connects a word. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. You don't have to ask. Just sign out on the bathroom sheet, okay? Okay. Where's that at? It's on the back board where it says bathroom sign out. You're going to need a pencil. Oh. Okay, so a conjunction connects words or group of words together. That's the conjunction function. There are three different kinds of conjunctions that we're going to talk about today. Coordinating, correlative, and subordinating. So, whiteboard, where it's got poop emoji okay. and it says bathroom sign out. There you go. Okay. Love my you guys know this. Then there are also these things we're going to talk about that are called conjunctive adverbs. So they're actually adverbs, but they kind of work like conjunctions. So we'll just take a look at those um, a little bit later on. But right now, I want to pull in a little video. Okay.
intro to conjunctions, okay? Now, and, but, and, or are the primary conjunctions that you guys are going to use, and they are called ordinating conjunctions. You guys ever heard that song before? Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Now, I'll be second your head all day, so you're welcome. All right, so coordinating conjunctions, they connect words or group of words of equal importance in a sentence, okay? And that's kind of like the key with coordinating conjunctions. They connect words of equal importance. Just remember this acronym, FANBOYS. You guys saw this come up on your grammar diagnostic quiz that you did on Monday. So if you didn't know what it meant, well now you do, okay? A FANBOY is a coordinating conjunction, and this is what it stands for. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. So, those right there are the coordinating conjunctions. Those are the only coordinating conjunctions. Okay, so just remember the fanboys. So here would be an example of a coordinating conjunction being used in a sentence. Sonia and her friend watched the new music video. Okay, so that and is hooking up the subjects of equal importance. Sonia and friend. Okay, does that make sense? Coordinating conjunctions, I think, are the easiest. Next up is correlative conjunctions. I see you straying from the path. Uh huh. All right, there we go. All right, correlative conjunctions, you guys, are word pairs that serve to join groups of words. Okay, so they're always going to be paired up. So examples would be neither, nor, either, or, both, and, whether, or, not, only, but also. Now. With these correlative conjunctions, you're going to have the first part earlier in the sentence, and then you're going to have the second part later in the sentence. Sometimes they'll only be separated by one word. Sometimes they'll be separated by a lot of words. Okay? So this would be an example of the either or. Either the music or the visual images will grab your attention. Okay? I think. Um, not only, but also we use that one a lot, and then both and, we use that one a lot too. Oh, ran out of breath today. Sorry, guys. Okay, questions on relative conjunctions. So just make sure you watch out for the pairs, okay? If you see one of these earlier in the sentence, you better look and find one of these guys. If you see an and, remember and is one of our fanboys. Make sure there's not a both earlier in the sentence. Because if it's both and, you don't just want to circle the and as the conjunction because then you're missing the other half. So just always kind of double check for that, okay? Okay, so I have a quick question for you guys. If you know, if you don't know, it's not a big deal. But if you know, go ahead and type the answer. What is a subordinate, a subordinate clause? Anybody know? It's looking like nobody knows. Oh, wait, maybe. Yes. Ada said a clause started by a conjunction question mark. Yes, it is started by a conjunction. Okay, that was a good guess. Um, do you guys know what a dependent clause is? A clause or part of a sentence that depends on another part of the sentence. Dependent clauses cannot stand alone as a sentence by themselves because otherwise they would make zero sense. Do you guys remember that? Subordinate clause is just a fancy way of saying dependent clause. They are exactly the same thing. So a, a subordinate clause is a dependent clause. But the reason I'm asking you subordinate clause, I'm going to start calling them subordinate clauses because we have these things called subordinating conjunctions. Okay? So subordinating conjunctions, what they do is they introduce a subordinate, aka dependent, clause. 
and it joins it to the independent clause. Okay, so anytime you see any of these words, there's a good chance that you have a dependent, aka subordinate, clause on your hands. Okay, so I wanted you to just kind of be aware of that list. So here would be an example of a subordinating conjunction being used. Although music videos are short, they are expensive to produce. Although is a subordinating conjunction. Okay, the subordinate clause is although music videos are short. If you were to go up and say that to someone, like, although music videos are short, they're going to be like, what? Okay, it can't stand alone by itself as a sentence. We need to hook it up to the independent clause. They are expensive to produce, right? And the way we do that is we have the subordinate clause there. And we have a comma hooking it up to the independent clause. Does that make sense? With me? Okay. All right, the last thing I want to touch on with conjunctions is what is called a conjunctive adverb. So technically these are adverbs, but we're talking about them now because they function like conjunctions. Okay, and here's the list of all of the conjunctive adverbs. What conjunctive adverbs do is they just join two independent clauses, so two clauses that could stand alone by themselves in sentences, they join them together. And you've probably used some of these before. Um, I was going to say however. Okay, that's what I was looking for. However is a conjunctive adverb, so you probably used that before. Um, and this should not, okay, yeah. Often they will follow a semicolon, so especially when you're hooking up two independent clauses together, the conjunctive adverb kind of acts as the glue. And the pattern that you use is you put a semicolon after the first independent clause, then you have your conjunctive adverb, then you have a comma, then you have your second independent clause. So that would be an example right here. He ate all the Halloween candy, semicolon, conjunctive adverb, consequently, comma, be cute. Okay, so all conjunctive adverbs do is they hook up two independent clauses. If we were to take this away and we made each of these sentences by themselves, that would work too. He ate all the Halloween candy, be cute. Right? Those are both complete sentences and can stand alone, but because they're related, this conjunctive adverb is kind of nice to use because it shows that they're, those sentences are related and hooks them together nicely. Just good writing. Does that make sense? Is it with me? I think so. All right, let's do some practice. I want you to identify what type of conjunction is highlighted here. Use your notes if you have to. Anyone want to make a case for what they put? Auburn, what did you put? Auburn, why did you put correlative conjunction? Because um, as a first part of the sentence, it's going and then it's going to be And correlative conjunctions have two parts. Gotta 
Yes, a conjunctive adverb. Okay, if it's surrounded by punctuation, if it has a semicolon on one side and a comma on the other, or if it has two commas on both sides of it, or one comma on both sides, one on this side, one on this side, it has to be a conjunctive adverb. Okay, conjunctive adverbs are always going to be surrounded by punctuation. Okay, so this one is a conjunctive adverb. Nice job. Most of you got that. Okay, last part of speech. Interjection. I have another video. Just because I love Schoolhouse Rock, especially when it comes to grammar, it's so fun. <laughs> I love those videos so much. Okay, so interjections, that's exactly what they do. They are words or small phrases that are used to show excitement or emotion. Woo! Erg! Awooga! Stuff like that, okay? What are some other interjections you guys can think of? Shout them out. Yay! What? No! Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Nay! Yeah. What else? What do you what do you yell when you hurt yourself? Ouch! What else? Give me one more. Give me one more. You can see my mouth right now. It's open. Like an O. Wow! Okay? So these are all interjections. They just show excitement or emotion. Okay, they don't function as any other part of speech in the sentence. They're just interjections. Ugh. That's another one. Right? That's Grumpy Cat's favorite interjection. Alright, homework time. Let's start. So you got your worksheet from the vacuum. That's your homework. You gotta do all the problems, front and back. Okay, this is our last parts of speech worksheet. Woot woot. Um, now you guys, just as a reminder, so I handed back your other worksheet at the start of class. The answer key for that worksheet, it was the uh, adjective and pronoun and noun worksheet. The answer key for that one is posted on Google Classroom. So, uh, you guys need to make sure that you take the time to like look through your answers and compare it to the answer key. We were having some problem with identifying, what was it? I think it was like adjectives and the words they're modifying and then pronouns. We were having some trouble with that. So please just make sure that you double check through your worksheet with the answer key. The answer key is posted under Tuesday's assignment, just so you guys know. Okay? Do you guys have any questions for me on anything? Is that making sense? You know what you got to do? Okay, sounds good. So you have 10 minutes to get started on that worksheet. You should be able to get a good chunk of the way through it.